following is a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tony D'Angelo's PM Coast to Coast. Now, here's your host, Tony D'Angelo. And a very good afternoon to you all along the stations of the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network up and down the coast. I am Tony D'Angelo. I am your host for Tony D'Angelo's PM Coast to Coast. I mean, it would be a little odd if we had somebody else hosting. Maybe I'll try that sometime. But then again, if I did that, you might like he or she better than you do me, and I don't know what I'd do with myself. But uh, it is really a warm day for December on the East Coast, and it rained and it rained and it rained and it rained and rained a little this morning, so... I felt another rain delay would be in order. My date that I've chosen is March 25th, 1975. A lot of interesting things happen that we're going to get into, and we're going to have a whole lot of fun. So what I would like for you to do is sit back, as Tom Snyder would say, fire up a color fina and listen to some comfortably zoned Boss Radio, and we're going to be coming right back to you with some retro commercials and then the news. I'm going to call this, my show is going to be Comfortably Zoned Boss Radio. Do it, baby! We'll be right back right after this. On March 25th, 1975, it was actually cool and sunny. I was in New York that day. I was dating a girl from my junior college. We went down to see art museums. Probably the first and the last episode of culture in my life. Um, The relationship after a while failed miserably. You cannot put a silk purse in a sow's ear. This is why I am left to do boss radio. Also... Notice the commercial for Champagne. 
I really thought it was a commercial for Sham Pipple, which was the favorite drink of Fred Sanford on Sanford and Son, if I recall. It was Ripple and Ginger Ale. And if I say that too often, I will be called on the carpet at Comfortably Zoned Radio and have my wrist snapped. Snapped, slapped, all kinds of things. My face slapped. Anyway, on to some news. New York City is in fiscal trouble, badly, and Mayor Beam and Albany are fighting. If you recall, New York actually went almost bankrupt in September with the famous admonition of Jerry Ford saying, drop dead, I'm not going to bail out a city that didn't do its diligence when it needed to. Speaking of President Ford, he offered uh, some assistance and a policy study to deal with Mideast trouble. It seems that whatever year we do, there's Mideast trouble. Now we have Mideast trouble. We've done the 60s, there's Mideast trouble. In the 70s, there's Mideast trouble. But that's uh, what was happening on that day. Patty Hearst is on the run again. Tanya from the Symbionese Liberation Army. Um, my uh, guess was perhaps she and Dave Kingman were perhaps running away together, but I really have no way of disproving that other than doing it circumstantially. Governor Carey of New York wants to scrap the Pension Review Board, and this of course could lead to all kinds of problems that eventually did. And get this, David Nelson, son of Ozzy, and June Blair got divorced. What's wrong with you, man? She was a doll. I don't understand that. David right now, or as Casey Stingle would say, is dead at the present time. June is apparently still alive. What a lovely lady. And her entertainment career actually ended with the Ozzy and Harriet shows maybe about a decade before. So that was really kind of a sad happening. We'll be back with more of March 25th, 1975, right after this. happenings on March 25th, 1975. Stock markets took a terrible beating that day, not unlike yesterday. On TV, you get your choice of Hawaii Five-0 or Ironside. Movies playing at that time, the front page with Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. Robert Redford is in the great Waldo Pepper. And Dustin Hoffman is starring in Lenny. If you're interested in some, shall we say, wild side movies, the legendary Gene Bell is in TNT. you got to look real hard to find where that's playing. Just make sure you keep the car locked. In sports, Ken Norton stopped Jerry Corey in five rounds at MSG. Jerry Corey says he's going to retire. Unfortunately, he did not and had some cruel episodes in the ring after that. Chuck Wepner, the real Rocky, 
went 15 rounds, sort of, against Muhammad Ali in Cleveland, forever emblazoning the legend of Chuck Wepner to everyone coming in contact with him. I've interviewed this man. He's been wonderful. Both the Mets and the Yankees lose an exhibition. Dave Kingman hit two homers, and again, he ran out. I guess Patty Hearst was waiting in the car. We'll be back with more of March 24th, 1975, right after this. Comfortably zoned radio network, my show, Tony D'Angelo's PM Coast to Coast, the rain delay edition. I am today your guest commentator, and I would like to talk to you about the current government shutdown. As of the time of this recording, the government still can't get anything together with respect to any sort of funding whatsoever, other than a lot of swearing and finger pointing and all kinds of things like that. And Without taking any particular side on this, other than the fact of stating my idea of government, which is do the, use your favorite adjective, what you are to do and let the rest of us live our lives in peace and safety and getting our business done and getting our things, our goods to market, so to speak. Um, This is a terrible, terrible, terrible show on behalf of government. And I've got to believe that there's got to be some sort of equanimity these people can reach, other than political posturing and grandstanding and name-calling and all sorts of things like that. But we'll see what happens come Monday. Uh, I do have some government business on Monday. As of right now, I cannot do it. I don't know where to go, what to do, how to go about things. And when this happens, it just becomes a... uh, There's so many things in in the law and in procedure and that there really aren't any precedents for. Uh, Like, for example, is a government shutdown uh, like a Saturday or a Sunday where you have another day? And the answer is I do not know that off the top of my head because... When these laws were written, people thought, well, the government's going to be open. Somebody's going to be there doing the business of government. And apparently, that's not happening. So, in the words of Warner Wolf, government, Democrat, Republican, conservative, socialist, you're all a bunch of bums. You all get the boo of the week. I'll be back with some more fun and boss radio in 60 seconds. Buckle up for safety, buckle up, buckle up for safety, always buckle up. Pull your seatbelt snug, give an extra tug, buckle up for safety, buckle up. Buckle up for safety, buckle up, buckle up for safety, always buckle up. Show the world you care by the belt you wear. Buckle up for safety when you're driving, buckle up, buckle up for safety, buckle up. Buckle up for safety, always buckle up. Put your mind at ease, tell your riders, please. Get your seatbelts buckled, everybody buckle up. 
back. The National Safety Council says, if you don't have seat belts, get them. If you do have seat belts, use them. Seat belts can and do save lives every day. Buckle up for safety, everybody. Buckle up. No matter what I do in this business, and I've had the privilege of interviewing some great people, doesn't make me better. Well, actually, it does make me better because I had the chance to talk to them. There will be riots if I do not do the baseball birthdays. So here we go. The birthdays of March 25th. Brooklyn's own Lee Mazzilli brew out 60, not brew out, blew out 65 candles last March 25th. Lee had a long career, very versatile player, former New York Met and New York Yankee. New Jersey's multi-position Jeff Kunkel was 56 last March 25th. Jeff is the son of Bill Kunkel, former New York Yankee. And get this, Jeff played every position on the field, including pitcher and DH. What a what a interesting thing to say. It's uh, I, I think that's a noteworthy achievement. And get this, Jerry Cutzler, who was two and one for the 1990 White Sox, blew out 53 candles on March 25th. Jerry played those games and was never heard from again. He's now teaching PE in Wisconsin. We would like to wish Lee Mazzilli, Jeff Kunkel, Jerry Kutzler, and anybody else with a birthday on March 25th a wonderful one. We'll be back right after this. As we leave this day of March 25th, 1975, special thanks to all the people that made it possible. Chuck Wepner, Jerry Corey, Ken Norton, Gerald Ford, eh, maybe not Gerald Ford, maybe not Patty Hearst either, certainly Dave Kingman. We're going to be coming back to you with another holiday rain delay during the break, so have some fun with it, and I'm glad you're having fun with these broadcasts. So... Remember the corporate mission of the comfortably zoned radio network, especially this time of year. Get those lightly used children's books and donate them to a Project Head Start near you. Kids need to read. Our mission in 2019, no more stupid kids. How about that? How about no more stupid show hosts? Anyway, you guys have a wonderful week. Good day. Bye. Thanks, Dan Ingram. Zoned Radio Network production. Thank you for listening.